And as you know, math tax is coming up, so we're here to help you out. All you need is a trusty rusty pencil, a good calculator, and our top 10 tips for how to do all in tax. Hey guys, I'm Jason, and I'm going to demonstrate tip number 10. The weight limit for an elevator is 2,000 pounds. Which statement is best supported by this information? Alright, tip number 10 says that we must draw a picture and then label it. Let's assume that this is a gearless traction elevator. Now, with this picture complete and everything properly labeled, we can now conclude that the answer is C. The elevator can carry up to eight people who weigh as much as 120, uh, 250 pounds. Hey, I'm Varun, and I'm going to show you tax tip number nine. Which function includes the data set 2466 and 129? Oh, well, tax tip number nine tells us to work backwards. So let's start with answer choice A. So far, so good. Well, since 2 times 6 is 12 and not 6, so we can cross out A. So let's go to B. Okay, wrong again. All right, now only one answer choice left. Why are you taking the last one? That's retarded. Oh, there we go. Hi, I'm Prashant, and I'm going to show you tax tip number 8. Okay, find the equation that can be used to determine the total area of the composite figure shown below. We're going to use tax tip number 8, which says to refer to the formula sheet. Well, here we have a rectangle and a triangle. The formula for the area of a rectangle is area equals length times width. And the formula for the area of a triangle is area equals one-half base times side. So here we have sides W, W, L and W. So the area of the rectangle will be L times W plus the area of the triangle which would be one half W times W which equals one half W squared. And this is answer choice number A. Hey guys, it's Jason again and I'm not Sally Victorian. But anyways, let's go back to uh, tax tip number seven. Which of these equations describes the relationship in which every real number x corresponds to a non-negative real number? Alright, just by looking at these answer choices, I think that the answer is G, because the graph looks something like this. So for every x value, it would be a non-negative real number. But according to tax tip number 7, you must use a graphing utility to check your answers anyways. Let's move on to this graphing calculator. First, let's uh, type in these values. So, y1, the first one will be x. The second one will be x squared. The third one will be x cubed. And then the fourth one would just be minus x. And let's go to the graph. As you can see, the first one is wrong because it goes down into the negative area. Same with the third, and same with the fourth. Therefore, we can conclude that the second answer is correct. Hey, my name is Cat, and I'll be showing you tactic tip number six. For each period, Mr. Brown gets to see this one project if he does. Project as the rest of the grid. Mr. Brown will ask Anthony and do it in on his small minimum grade Anthony Square on his project in order to have a final grade of that. Wow. Tax tip number six says to read the question slowly, so we will do that. For each grading period, Mr. Brown gives his students 
one project and two tests. The project counts as 20% of the student's final grade, and the mean of the two test scores counts as the rest of their grade. In Mr. Brown's class, Anthony earned a grade of 87 on his first test and a grade of 96 on his second test. Which of the following is a reasonable minimum grade Anthony must score up on his project in order to have a final grade of at least 90? Alright, for tax tip number 6, don't worry about spending too much time because the more time you spend on a tax means the less time you actually spend in class. <laughs>